Hello and welcome to this second session of this five-part series, The Performance Eye for the SQL Guy. In this session, I am extending on what was covered in session one with another feature that was released with SQL Server 2014 to help improve the performance of your SQL Server environments. My name is Warwick Rudd. I'm a Microsoft Certified Master and the Principal Consultant at SQL Masters Consulting. You can read more about me on this page for yourself. Following on from Session 1, the Buffer Pool Extension, we are continuing looking at the remaining five features over the course of this series. In this session, we are having a look at the Resource Governor for I.O., so let's get started. Now, the Resource Governor was first introduced with the release of SQL Server 2008 in the Enterprise Edition. So this feature itself is not new, but it does have some new functionality. The Resource Governor in SQL Server 2008 through to SQL Server 2012 is a set of technologies within the database engine that allows us to place controls over our CPU and or memory utilization. Now with the release of SQL Server 2014, we can apply the same control but to our I.O. in our SQL Server environments. We do need to remember though that the Resource Governor is limited to the database engine only. So this means that we're not able to utilize this tool for managing I.O. for any other activity. So that means that we're not able to control the I.O. for analysis services, reporting services, or integration services. Once we have got Resource Governor configured in our environment, we are able to guarantee the minimum available resources. We can limit the maximum resource usage, and we can monitor the overall resource usage in our environment. To configure Resource Governor, there are three fundamental components, and these have not changed. Resource pools. These are the physical resources on your server that we're able to specify how much can be allocated to an individual or group when resource contention is being experienced. So we are able to specify the minimum and maximum values for CPU, memory, and now I.O. Our workload groups are those groups of people that have been identified that require resource limits set to provide an appropriate performance during periods of contention. Now the classifier function, we need to ensure we get this correct. The classifier function is used to determine which workload group and appropriately the resource limits that are applied during times of uh, resource contention. Like everything in Microsoft SQL Server, we need to be able to monitor what's going on, or we need to be able to look at the configuration as what, it, as what has been set up. With the release of the Resource Governor for I.O., there have been changes to two DMVs to cater for this new functionality. SysDM Resource Governor Resource Pools and SysDM Resource Governor Configuration have both been modified to add extra columns to cater for this new functionality. A new DMV has been created to capture the I.O. usage stats for us. SysDM Resource Governor Resource Pool Volumes provides this new information. For those of you who work heavily with extended events, there are two new extended events available for you to keep track of what is going on in the environment. File Write and Queued and File Read and Queued. Also there has been uh, in inclusions into the performance counters. If you go under the Resource Pool Stats object, you will find those objects there. So let's have a look at a quick demo. In this demo, we're going to have a look at how we can configure Resource Governor for I.O. in our environment, and we're going to have a look at how that impacts the I.O. utilization. So let's start. First off, we're going to create two new resource pools specifically for I.O. and we're going to limit the uh, max IOPS to 20 and 30, bearing in mind this is only on my laptop. We'll create the associated workload groups and our classifier function using SQL authentication to determine which resource group and the appropriate uh, resource limitations. Now that we've got Resource Governor configured, we're going to have a look at running this statement to see what type of I.O. utilization we get without the governor in place.
So running this statement here, we're going to have a look at the IO utilization in my environment. Now looking at the Perfmon counter, we can see that our default uh, IOPS that we're receiving is between about 45 and 60 IOPS a second on my C drive. It's a little variation, but this gives us a good indication as to what we would uh, possibly receive in our environments. Now we're going to have a look at uh, the difference between that and what we would expect to receive once we've got resource governor for IO in place to level out the playing field. So I'm just logging in using uh, SQL authentication and we're going to run exactly the same statement and while that's running we'll go back and have a look at our performance monitor and we can see that we've dropped off from our standard uh, IOPS down to the green one which is our low pool and we're getting that 20 IOPS a second. So we've been able to show in this demonstration with the configuration of the resource governor for IO how we can uh, make it a more level playing field to even out the performance in our environment. So that brings us to the end of this session. To summarize what we've had a look at here, how we can configure the resource governor for IO to make that uh, level playing field to even out the performance in our environment. I'd like to say thank you for uh, joining me today. I do hope that uh, you got something out of this and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.